Hey guys, before we jump into the video, I just want to clarify a few things. My expectations for the One Piece live action anime, they were set pretty low. And you know what? Rightfully so. Because in the past, we have gotten so many cringeworthy shit anime adaptations. I mean, just to count a couple of them, uh, Netflix's Death Note, the Avatar The Last Airbender fucking thing, um, the Dragon Ball movie was garbage. Um, and of course, Cowboy Bebop, and so many others, right? I don't even need to name them. All of them were so cringeworthy. But I gotta say, um, I was somewhat impressed with the One Piece live-action anime. You know, I think they really took their time with this and made it out to be something that is uh, not exactly Oda's original works, but a very heartfelt, uh, you know, representation of what One Piece is. Um, so, you know what, I'm, I'm very thankful for that, if nothing else. But the real question is, guys, when the hell are we going to get a Berserk live-action adaptation? Like, and, and if we do, I better damn well get to play fucking Corcus the Chad. I want some of that uh, fucking Apostle titties in my face. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, guys, uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, this is going to be a non-scripted breakdown of the One Piece live-action anime, starting off with episode one. Let's jump on into it. Alright guys, so just like with the manga and the anime, the live-action version of One Piece, it kicks off with none other than Goldie Roger's execution. Um, and with this execution, really, like, I think it was good. I think it kind of failed to carry a little bit of the weight that the actual anime did. Um, it wasn't as impactful for me, you know what I mean? Um, with this, you get to see Garp, though, and uh, you get to be introduced to a bunch of other characters. Roger, in this case, is played by a guy named uh, Michael Dorman, so I think he did a pretty good job overall. Definitely looks like the King of the Pirates. Um, yeah, yeah, I think enough said on that. But Soon after, you know, we see uh, Roger get executed and we kick off with the Great Pirate Era, pretty soon we get to see Luffy, and he's talking to like a little news coup, like that, like the seagull on his, uh, his new boat, which is sinking, and he ends up like hopping into a, cr like a barrel, and literally just ends up meeting like Kobe in the same way, right, like where the barrel floats onto Alveda's ship, and uh, yeah, and then like Luffy and Kobe meet. Not too much is different in between this. So, meeting Kobe and Alveda, I would say, in this adaptation, like, they look they look pretty fucking good. Um, Kobe's played by a guy named Morgan Davies, and Alveda, I forget the actress who plays her, they both do a really good job, is my point. Um, and overall, you know, the fight scene goes down as it would. Um, I think, you know what, Kobe even says, in one of these things, which is pretty fucking weird, he's like, Alveda makes me paint uh, her toenails. Which was like a little bit too much information that I, I didn't really need to hear that. Um, but I mean, hey, if you One Piece fans were really curious about that, now we know that Kobe had to paint her toenails. That's a little nice. <laughs> um, but after we see Kobe and Alveda, we end up coming back and we see a little uh, backstory with Luffy meeting Shanks. Which is pretty cool, you know, it's uh, Kid Luffy at this point, and we see Shanks and his whole crew, Yasop, Lucky Roo, everybody else. Um, back in uh, Fuchsia Village, and it's, it's, you know, it's a cute scene, it's nice, it gives a little bit of backstory on Luffy, just like you have with the original anime. Enough said. Now, we cut to Zoro. Yeah, so Zoro, I mean, Zoro looks really good, I like the whole scene with him, uh, he's played by Makenyu Arata, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm probably not, um, but either way, it was a really cool scene, we get to see Zoro at, like, this little shrine, and he actually, we end up seeing him fight, uh, Mr. Seven from Baroque Works, so... Really cool scene overall. I mean, like, I think, in my opinion, guys, the fight scenes with Zoro, they, like, they translate, like, it, it adapts so much better from, like, the, you know, the manga over into, like, a live-action, uh, you know, adaptation. Some of Luffy's fights, which I'm going to talk about in a minute here, I don't think they translate as well as I would have liked to have seen them, uh, which is unfortunate, but, you know, you get what you get. So after the fight with Zoro concludes, he pretty much kills Mr. Seven, cuts him in half, Really cool fight scene. Uh, I was a big fan of it. Yeah, so uh, speaking of fight scenes, honestly, guys, I have to say that the fight scene between Luffy and Alveda, it left a little bit to be desired, at least in my opinion, right? Like, I'm not, this is not objective. This is me just speaking about how I feel about the fight scenes. The CGI, it looked okay. Um, there was a scene where, he, like, like, you know, Luffy goes to, like, punch Alveda, and she's like, What type of a monster are you? And uh, Inaki Odoi says, like, 
oh, I'm the rubbery kind, and I fucking cringed into oblivion, right? And this is coming from somebody who, like, I'm, I'm fucking cringeworthy myself, right? But... Just hearing those lines, I was like, Ugh. like it fucking made me cringe a little bit, guys. So, um, you know, I, I think there's a little bit left to be desired with some of the fight scenes. Again, this is only episode one, so I, I'm sure there's a lot of good fight scenes down the line here. And of course, I'm late to the party as always. I'm still watching this as I go along, so I will inform you guys if my opinions change on this. So, after the fight concludes with Luffy and Alvida... Uh, Kobe and Luffy end up escaping, like, the Miss Love Dock, like, her ship, on a little rowboat. And we get to see a little bit more of Luffy's backstory. And it's pretty cool, you know, you get a little bit of Easter eggs in there. And there's a shit ton of Easter eggs, guys. Like, if you are a true One Piece fan, you will not, like, you know, you, you'll be able to pick up on all of these Easter eggs from, like, bounty posters to, like, Bink Sake playing in the background. You know, you can tell that a lot of love went into this series. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to be able to tell you all the Easter eggs. That's something you just need to go out and find for yourself, right? That's not going to be what I'm doing here. This is a strict breakdown. But I'm saying if you do enjoy the Easter eggs, you should definitely give this a watch. I'm sure you'll, you know, notice a lot of them. But with this said, we do get to see a little bit more of uh, Luffy's backstory with Shanks. We get to see uh, Higama. And uh, he's looking, you know, pretty, like, he's looking homeless, honestly. It looks like the dude woke up from under a bridge or some shit like that. So, I mean, overall, pretty accurate to the anime adaptation. <laughs> um, but, you know, with that said, guys, like, it's, it's pretty good. Pretty good overall. I think the backstories are really good. Um, and it captures exactly, you know, like, the relationship between uh, Luffy and Shanks and the importance of it. Which, you know, is the driving force in the main story here. And now, guys, we get to talk about Nami, played by Emily Rudd. Um, she does a really good job, at least in my opinion. I think she looks like pretty much like a one-for-one -one adaptation of Nami. And uh, in the first scene, we get to see her steal a little ship from a bunch of like you know buggies pirates, um, which it also happens within the anime. And I think it's really good. You know, uh, it captures like it's a good introductory scene her thief, her hatred of pirates, it's all on full display. So now all the main characters, uh, Kobe, Luffy, Zoro, and Nami are in Shellstown in this little bar. And uh, at this point we get to see Helmeppo. And the actor for Helmeppo, he really does, uh, you know, personify like the absolute dickishness and assholery that is Helmeppo's character. Um, it's pretty pretty awesome. It does a really good job. Like knocks down the the rice balls from this little girl in the bar, and uh, immediately like challenges Zoro only to get his fucking ass beat. So it's uh, you know a really good scene overall. I think the actors, you know, awesome. Really good scene. Um, Zoro's fight scenes again. Like I, I put asterisks on this because they're really good. Like out of every fight scene that I've seen in episode one. Zoro is just, like, taking away all the best fight scenes. And again, I would say it's probably because sword fights are easier to adapt than some, like, you know, weird, stretchy, rubbery CGI fucking powers, you know? So Zoro's fight scenes are all really good. So as Zoro is giving Helmeppo an ass-whooping, uh, we get to see Nami knock out a Marine and steal his uniform. And, uh, you know, you'll see where that goes later. But as uh, Zoro is pretty much finished beating Helmeppo's ass, he's brought in to Captain Morgan's office. So Axan Morgan is played by a guy named Langley Kirkwood, who really does personify all of like the best traits of Captain Morgan. Uh, he's a character that like you could actually believe would be a military captain, you know? Like just like looking at him, his demeanor, the way he conducts himself. Obviously, it's a bit toned down from the anime version with the dickishness, but uh, you know it's actually believable, which is kind of cool. You can get behind that vibe. Um, so Morgan pretty much offers Zoro two choices: you can either join the Marines, or you can send you can spend like seven days out in the yard. You know, like that little um, whatever, like the cross that Zoro was like on for. I think it was like thirty days in the actual manga. Um, so it's seven days now in here, which is maybe maybe a little bit more believable, I guess. But um, so he gives him that choice, and it's pretty interesting, if nothing else. Um, and Zoro pretty much turns him down and says, hey, I'm not joining the Marines, I got my own thing going on here. And uh, he takes the uh, seven days in the, in the yard. So, uh, you know, Zoro being his usual badassness. Um, and then we get a scene with Luffy and Kobe, who are talking about the bar fight, and uh, they're in like the, the, the port at this point, and you get to see a bunch of like beautiful lights, and it's a really uh, you know unique atmosphere. And Kobe and Al uh, Kobe and Luffy get to talk about identity and like their purpose within the world. And Kobe says, at least when I was with Alvida's crew, uh, I had a purpose and I knew where I belonged within the world. 
and Luffy is pretty much like, hey man, no, you need to like follow your dreams, and uh, it's it's a really cool scene, and I can't do it justice by describing it. All I can say is you should go watch it because it was really special. You know, the lights in the harbor uh, set a really nice, you know visual aesthetic for the entire thing. The cinematography is beautiful, so I could not recommend highly enough that you watch that scene. That was one of them between those two actors, that um, Inaki and I forget the other guy who plays Kobe, but it was, it was really nice. Um, one of my favorite scenes, actually. But after the scene, we cut back to Zoro, and we see Helmeppo uh, carrying the Wado Ichimonji out there, and he's pretty much taunting Zoro in the yard. Zoro has a uncharacteristically like different moment where he gets angry, and it, it makes sense because Helmeppo is holding you know the sword, and if you know the the point behind the sword, right between uh, like actually reading the manga, then it would make sense. It hasn't been revealed at this point within you know the live action adaptation, but. We all know why he Zoro is getting so pissed because he's holding the Wado. Yeah, and so uh, when Zoro is tied up, uh, Luffy ends up coming on out, and he pretty much unties Zoro after you know Luffy, of course, asks Zoro, "Hey, I saw you yesterday. You're an absolute badass. Join my crew." And Zoro pretty much turns him down. He's like, "No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing that." <laughs> he's like, "Yo, I, I kill pirates like you for a living, man. I'm not, I'm not joining your crew." And at this point, Luffy, you know, he doesn't push him. He just says, "Okay." I just think it's a shame for you to be tied up out here, so I'm going to fucking let you go. He, uh, you know, frees uh, Zoro of his restraints, and, uh, you know, Luffy pretty much toddles into the uh, marine base there, trying to find a uh, map to the Grand Line. Um, so it's a kind of, it's a cool scene, like the first interaction we have between these two characters, and uh, I think both of their personalities are conveyed pretty well, so um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Alright guys, so this next scene is honestly, it's fucking insane, I didn't expect it. We see, so after Luffy, oh my god, after Luffy frees Zoro, we cut to Helmeppo's bedroom, where Helmeppo, I shit you not, he's butt-ass naked. So if any of you One Piece ladies or men were fucking holding out to see Helmeppo naked, well, I mean, you, there you go, you got it, baby. It's in the live-action anime, so, uh, you know, <laughs> enjoy it, I guess, if that's something you're into. Uh, Helmeppo is butt-ass naked standing in front of his mirror like a little kid he's pretty much like flexing and shit and he's like fucking like he's having like the wadoichi emoji and it's and it's it's ridiculous it's like a little kid type of shit zoro walks in on helmeppo naked in his bedroom and helmeppo is fucking so embarrassed he like grabs like this little like teddy bear like he covers his dick and uh it, you know it, it is it is a ridiculous scene and uh that is one that i was not expecting you guys, maybe, maybe you'll enjoy it. Uh, I thought it was fucking wild. So, uh, you know, maybe you guys will enjoy that. Zoro goes in there, uh, sees Helmetpo, and, he, you know, he just gives him a bad haircut. You know, he gives him, like, that stupid, uh, you know, like, the bowl cut looking thing that we all know him from, the anime. And, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty crazy. Um, meanwhile, Luffy, who was sneaking into the marine base, meets up with Nami after Nami had a fight with a couple of guards. And the two end up uh, going to Morgan's office, where they actually encounter Captain Morgan. And he, he says to Nami, he's like, hey, I don't recognize you. And she's like, oh, I transferred from the 77th Division from the Marines. Which, to give the live action some real credit here, that's an actual division within the One Piece series. So, they did their homework, guys. If nothing else, like, they, they know their shit. So, you know, I gotta give them kudos for that. But Nami tells him, hey, yeah, I, I, I'm a recent transfer, whatever. And then Morgan's like, okay, whatever. So he ends up leaving. Luffy and Nami end up hightailing into his office where they, where they break in. And they end up stealing the safe um, within Morgan's office. And Luffy is pretty much trying to rip the safe out from the ground with his, like, rubber powers or whatever. And it ends up catapulting him backwards, hits Nami, and sends the two of them flying out of the window. Um, and, you know, of course, like, you know, Nami lands on Luffy, and the safe lands on the ground, so, I mean, they're both fine, it's One Piece logic, right? But, uh, you know, they're, they're out in the main courtyard at this point, and this is where a massive fight scene starts to take place at the end of the episode. Yeah. So, at this point, you have Luffy and Nami in, like, the courtyard, and they are being surrounded by a shit ton of Marines. Um, and so, Morgan comes out, and he pretty much... I love this scene. It was so fucking good. Uh, the way, you know, they, they really portrayed Morgan's ego. He says, I alone protect Shellstown. I alone protect uh, all of the people from pirate scum like you. And I alone, uh, like, I, I defeated Kuro of a thousand plans. 
and you know I think he even says like single-handedly you know because he has like an axe hand you get it right it's the joke um, but you know the whole eye alone again really good characterization of Morgan his own ego and uh, that's really what you know personifies this character so I think it was like like Langley Kirkwood did an amazing job uh, portraying that in this scene so I gotta give it to him it was really well done and of course after that little spiel you know the Nami and Luffy start to fight uh, all the Marines and pretty much Morgan starts to uh, try to attack Luffy and we see Zoro off to the side and he doesn't join in the fight at first he's kind of just watching um, and then after a little while he of course he joins in you know he, he I think he like felt like he owed Luffy for freeing him so we have like this badass tag team battle with you know Luffy and Zoro pretty much using you know like tag team attacks on Morgan Morgan's holding his own fairly well it's a pretty cool scene probably one of the better fight scenes out of uh, you know the whole first episode in my opinion and it ends off with uh, you know Zoro pretty much defeating Morgan and blocking him with his three swords and then Luffy finishes him off with like a gum gum whip attack where his whole leg like shoots outward and like knocks Morgan off you know off his balance or whatever um, and that's pretty much, you know, concludes the fight. But overall, guys, I think the fight team is pretty good. I would give it, like, a solid 7 out of 10. I really do think Zoro's fights just translate a little bit better. Um, but, you know, to each his own, right? Each, everybody's got their own opinion. And at the end of the episode, once they've uh, defeated, you know, Morgan and all that other stuff, they set off from Shellstown. Kobe gives him a little push, uh, you know, getting the boat out to sea. And he pretty much says goodbye to Luffy. And he joins the Marines. Now, cut to the end of the episode. We have uh, Kabaji, who was in the bar at Shellstown, like, who was like spying on uh, you know the main characters, is reporting back to Buggy, and he's pretty much saying, "Hey, listen, man, I fucked up. I couldn't get the map." Um, and then you know you have Buggy here, like classic Buggy, uh, just like acting like almost like this like Heath Ledger type of character. It's it is it, it's a big gap from his anime adaptation where Buggy has always been kind of more of a joke. You still have a lot of that joke, you know, like type of personality and a little bit of humor. He's a clown, right? But it's it's conveyed in almost like a more menacing way. And uh, it's really good. It's really good overall. Uh, Buggy is played by uh, Jeff Ward, I think. And he does a really good job, I'd say. He captures, you know, the uh, the funny clown aspect and also like a, kind of like a little bit of uh, intimidation factor with Buggy, if you could call it that, right? Uh, so it's pretty cool. You know, you cut towards the end and then you see Buggy and he's pretty much like, I want my map. And then, uh, you know, freaks out, whatever. <laughs> and then roll credits, end of the first episode, you know, uh, and gives you a little bit, uh, it alludes on what's to come. So overall, the first episode, guys, I think it was good. I think it was solid. I mean, we've seen how bad some of these anime adaptations are with fucking Cowboy Bebop. Like, oh, thank Christ they didn't do something like that because that was so bad. You know, like you have like Avatar The Last Airbender, the Dragon Ball movie, Death Note. Holy fuck. Like, they can't do... Ad like, I don't know why they just can't get the adaptations for anime correctly, but whatever. We just gotta be thankful for what we got right now. I would give the first episode a solid 7 out of 10. I was pretty happy with it. I think a lot of the quieter moments between characters like Kobe and Luffy or, you know, just Zoro, like, you know, like more of like the dialogue scenes are uh, more of my favorite than like the heavy action scenes. I think uh, the actors do a really good job portraying these characters. I think the spirit of One Piece uh, within this series is as strong as ever. You can tell that Oda really was involved within the process. And a lot of time and effort went into this overall. And so I'm very happy with it and how it's, you know, uh, going along so far. But guys, if you liked this breakdown, I can always do more of these, whether it's manga breakdowns or anime breakdowns. Um, you know, I, I plan on uploading more as far as like the One Piece live action series. I'm going to do the same thing with episode two. So, uh, you know, comment certain things that you guys would like me to touch upon with this series. And I'll do my best to cover them. But guys... As always, I uh, appreciate you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.